Hello guys, welcome to Chinta School of Statistics and Data Science. We are a team of extremely passionate teachers, researchers and statisticians from the top universities of India and US. So let's try to do it in a general way now. So if m is equal to m1 from here, observe this, then what are we getting? Or rather, what is the relationship between m and m1 and xn plus 1? Because they're distinct, right? So m is, now I'm writing in a different way. Uh, I am writing in a general way so that you understand the notation, this. So this is M1. So let's try to compare and find the relationship between them using Xn plus one. So you understand that what is the relationship is nothing but N times N times M is summation of I from one to N X I. And here N plus one times M1 is summation of I from one to N plus one X I is nothing but N X I plus Xn plus one. We are doing very step by step. So if you subtract them, so you get like this from this from this. So you get this is get cancelled. So you get xn plus one on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you get n plus one times m1 minus nm, right? So you get the relationship that n plus one times m1 minus nm is equal to xn plus one, right? And um, from here, you get the relationship of this and the question asks that if m and m m is greater than m1 or m equal to m1 naturally this will give a relationship between m and xn plus one so let's reduce it down to one variable so here there are two variables so let's reduce one variable down so we will replace n1 m1 in terms of this whichever is easy so let's see um or no or let's do this thing let's replace xn plus one in terms of m1 and m why because we are given a relationship between m1 and m Right. So therefore, let's see if we can incorporate that or not. So it's given the information. It's asking you that if M1 and M, what is, if M1 is this and M, M1 is equal to M1 or M1 less than M1, M, M1 less than M, then what is the relationship or of X? What is, what is inequality? That's what exactly it's asking. So since the relationship is between M and M1, that means if we can reduce the X1 plus variable, then we can probably see what relationship it induces in M and M1 on the left, right hand side. Based on that, or we can use left hand side, right? So we want to reduce this, use this equation to reduce this is a function of M and M1, right? Why? Because the relay, this, these are the two options given. So you see how you use the given information, the given options to make your calculation simpler. So we are doing it in a very general way, but let's see. Um, so n plus one times m square minus n times m one square plus n times x n plus one whole square. So let's replace it. It's n one plus times m one minus n times m whole square. Okay. Now the issue is this, that this is becoming a complex equation. That's why you have to think that can I do it in an easy manner? And that's why it's important to think, can I do it in an easy manner or not? So when these two equations are given, if m is equal to m1, we already know that xn plus one, we can write it in terms of is equal to m. We already proved that. So therefore, this equation will be simpler. You can just replace xn plus one by xn plus one whole square as m. Also, you can replace m1 as m, right? Uh, so this turns out to be nothing but n plus one m m square minus n m square my plus n m square right so this is this this cancels out so we are getting that summation of xi square so therefore we are required to find the relationship summation of xi square is what is the relationship with n plus one by m square what is the relationship with it uh, we don't know so how do you find it all of you on the same board same page with me guys so therefore we are trying to find the relationship between summation of xi square and n plus 1 m. let's do it for m equal to m1 and n plus 1 times m square so let me check if i have done all the calculations correctly uh, yeah great so what is m now so let's rewrite it so n is m is nothing but summation of xi square by n square this is what it's coming now let's take a simple example when you are on when you do not know the solution or it's too abstract for you always take simple examples and see what happens right so in this case if you want to take let's say one and two right the left hand side is five and the right hand side is n is equal to two here 
So it's three. This is x one and this is x two. So n is equal to so we are doing n plus one three times m square. The mean, which is let's make it three, so that it's divisible by two. So this will be ten, right? X one square plus x two square, and this will be three again times m is equal to two whole square. So this is four. So it's less than. So this is always less than. We don't know. Let's see. Let's take another case. Five. So here it is. 25 plus 1, 26, and here it is again 3 times 9. Uh, 6 by 2, 3 square, which looks like this is also true. Let's take another one. 9. Here it is 82, and here it is 3 times 9 by 10, so 5 square. Looks like it is true uh, in this case. It seems like it is true. Not looks like. Um, seems like the data says it's true. So why is this happening? Is it also true for higher numbers? You can try out more numbers, right? But let's look at the equations now. Um, is there a way we can find out that they are equal? Is there more? Is there any other information that we're missing? So set of n observations are given. That means they can be negative too, right? So can we take negative and see what happens here? Sure. So if it's negative, then the right hand side is zero. And the left hand side is positive. So this is not true. So there is no there is no single relationship. You see the point, all of you, to understand the point. So essentially, what it means that in this case, it cannot be anything cannot be told. How did we understand? We understood by taking examples. If we took positive numbers, the right hand side was becoming greater. If it be negative number, one and zero, this becomes greater than zero. Uh, greater than this. So therefore, since this inequality was related to this inequality, S and S1, that's how we got here, right? Hence, what it means that this inequality is not very, it's not always true. It's not a general statement. So essentially, we can produce, so this tells you that we can produce counterexample. So let's try out some counterexample where it is not always true. So in this case, it was, uh, let's see, on the left hand side, it was S, right? So we have to prove an a counter example where S is greater than S1. And we have found out that in this case, S is greater than S1. That means if we take positive and negative together. So we took one and minus one. If we take one and minus one, the mean is zero, right? So we define X1, X2 as like this. For this two, we define X1, X2, X3 as one, minus one, and zero. So X1, X2, N is equal to two. So x1, x2 is, so this is mean is 0. So we add the mean as x3 because for mean is equal to m is equal to m1, xn plus 1 must be equal to m. Then only m1 is equal to m, right? And in this case, let's calculate. For this 2, the standard deviation is coming out to be what? 2, right? This is the s. And for this 3, let's calculate the s1. The standard deviation is coming out to be, sorry, uh, it will be 2 by 2. Okay, because one square plus minus one whole square by two minus zero square. And in this case, it's turning out to be again two by three because one square plus minus one whole square plus zero square by three minus the mean, which is zero square, mean square. Okay, so hence this is S is greater than S1. One is greater than two by three. If you're enjoying the video, show some love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. We welcome you again to this passionate community of budding statisticians and data scientists. Let's enjoy the rest of the video. Stay tuned and stay blessed.